Yeah, science here on ThinkTech. <clears throat> That's our middle name, actually. And we're talking today about community matters. We're talking about the 2021 Lacey Beach Day of Discovery uh, with Art Kimura of HIGP and Adria Fun, also of HIGP in SOAS in the uh, University of Hawaii the science area at Manoa. Welcome to the show, Art. Andrea, Adria, nice to see your smiling faces. Thank you for the invitation, Jay. Uh, it's an honor to share the 20th anniversary of the astronaut Lacey Beach Day of Discovery that will be broadcast by YouTube on October 30th. So we're well on our way to developing the final product that will be delivered. Uh, as we all know, Lacey Beach was Hawaii's second astronaut, flew twice on the space shuttle, had a distinguished career in the Air Force, including uh, combat missions in Vietnam and flying with the U.S. Thunderbirds and successfully flew twice on the space shuttle, logging many hours in space. I think we all remember Lacey fondly because of his relationship with Nainoa Thompson as well. Uh, and the around the world voyage that Hokulea took was actually Lacey's idea to Nainoa oh. and his father oh. uh, many years ago. So that voyage completion fulfilled uh, that dream that they both had to sail Hokulea. Uh, we're very lucky uh, this year that we have uh, a new full-time robotics engineer in our office, Adria Fung. I first met Adria as a high school senior at Sacred Hearts Academy when she was the team captain of the robotics team. And I, I'm sure Adria can share a little bit more as to how she pursued her career path because of her involvement in robotics. But Adria received two NASA summer internships through our office went off to college and got her degree in robotics engineering and then a master's degree in educational technology here at the University of Hawaii. I've been teaching at St. Louis School Middle School for four years, uh, developing a world-class uh, robotics program at the middle level, taking her team to uh, Asian championships as well as the world championships and just an acclaimed uh, program that they, they operated there. So we're very fortunate we have Adria on board uh, as part of our, our team now at the Hawaii Space Grant Consortium. Okay, Adria, I promised you an opportunity to rebut <laughs> everything that Art said. <laughs> so you can add or subtract as you wish right now. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for having me on, on the show today. And pretty much what Art said is all correct in a way. <laughs> but yeah, I um, grew up here in Honolulu, Hawaii, went to Sacred Heart. Um, was part of the robotics team there when it first started. So I was a freshman at Sacred Hearts and then uh, pretty much Art uh, brought the McKinley robotics team to come and demonstrate at our gym there. And I was like, oh, robots are kind of cool. I kind of wanted to try, try it out and pretty much you know, fell in love with it and all. And I knew by sophomore year, I wanted to go into engineering. Yeah. But I think um, it wasn't until senior year that I was like, I really wanted to, learn more about robotics and actually pursue a degree in robotics engineering. Uh, and so I ended up going to the other side of the United States, went to Massachusetts, um, went to Worcester Polytechnic Institute, uh, was there for four years, uh, got my robotics engineering degree, an amazing program there. They, it's heavily project-based. And so um, we learned a lot of engineering concepts. You know, We took our math courses, um, our physics courses, electrical, mechanical, uh, computer engineering. And then we actually got a chance to apply the, that knowledge in various projects. And so I was able to do a project in Hong Kong and then also did another, my senior project back at uh, Worcester Polytechnic. And so I think that really helped to bring sort of that application to life. So we weren't just building robots just because it was fun. It's more so, you know, developing engineering solutions for uh, to help solve community problems. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring back to Hawaii was that knowledge and be able to instill that in my students. And so that's why instead of going towards um, the engineering industry, I came back home to pursue a career in um, education. Yeah, good move. Can Hawaii be a, <laughs> a center of uh, robotic education and development? Oh, I, I definitely think so. I mean, a lot of people think that robotics is such a specialized field, but it's something that you can, it's a vehicle in order to solve problems. And so 
pretty much essentially is we want to be able to solve all these community problems that we have here, whether it be clean water, clean energy, uh, pollution, but you know, robotics is just the means for that. And so being able to teach the students that you can apply robotics to just about any type of field um, in order to solve a problem, I think that's kind of the first stepping stone in getting the students interested in robotics and using that technology to help um, our communities here in Hawaii. Wow, all right, you know, I'm so jealous. Aren't you jealous too? I mean, uh, Avia is going to form the future. She's going to put Hawaii on the map as a robotics uh, you know, education and development place. God knows what kinds of incredible discoveries and projects we'll have out here. Aren't, aren't, aren't you jealous too? Yes, I, I think we're in a good place because uh, just by good fortune, Adria is coming into our office when we have two other young, very young engineers also working side by side with her. One a PhD in robotics engineering, the other actually is designing satellites right now. So I think we're in a good place. I think the future is very bright. Yeah, good. I think um, if you happen to pick the right thing at the right time, maybe you're no kidding. The world is going there, you know. Uh, so many, so many shows I see on cable television, oh, and with so many uh, documentaries about this, it's just it's going to take us into the future. And if we can be prepared for it, all we need now is capital. All we need now is to keep those kids, okay? And I guess that brings us to you know the the param parameters of the. Lacey Veach program. So Art, you know, why did HIGP establish this program in the first place? What does it do? What is it intended? Who is it intended to affect and encourage and educate? So 20 years ago, uh, Nainoa Thompson and I approached Punahou School since Lacey and Nainoa were graduates of Punahou to host an event so that we could bring the community together have the community support a day in which we would honor the legacy of Lacey Beach. And Punahou graciously accepted the opportunity. And for 17 years, we hosted live in person the Lacey Beach Day at Punahou School. In, uh, in its 18th year, we moved the program to Kamehameha School for a year of in person. And then last year, due to the pandemic, we pivoted it to a virtual event, which I, I estimate has been seen on YouTube by probably about 5,000 people, oh, terrific. not only in Hawaii, but from Japan all the way to the East Coast of the US to Canada. So I think our reach exceeded our expectations in many ways. And um, because of the pandemic again this year, no guarantee we could do in person, we decided to uh, do another virtual event with some lessons learned from last year. Um, but we have a great lineup this year. I, I'm very proud of the lineup we have, especially because it's very women-centered. We always are trying to encourage young women and men to go into STEM careers. So I think we have some tremendous uh, speakers that will, will portray how they got into this pathway into STEM. Like what? I mean, what, what kind of talks would they give? Is it, is it all autobiographical or is it substantive? Well, in, in some cases, they, they explain how they got into their career paths. Um, we have, for example, a welcome from uh, astronaut Megan MacArthur, who's actually on the space station. She flew to the space station in the second uh, crewed uh, SpaceX uh, mission, and she's going to be in space for six months. Uh, so she's still up there. But she does a nice welcome message. And I found out in doing some research on her, she was actually born in Honolulu, although she claims California is her home state where she grew up. Um, but you know, looking at her background, she, she got a PhD uh, in oceanography, but prior to that had a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering. Uh, another welcome message will be from Brianne Yamada. Brianne is just a I first met her as a student at the University of Hawaii. She was president of the Engineering Council at the College of Engineering and helped organize and run a robotics tournament there. But as a graduate uh, in electrical engineering, Brianne got a job at the Hawaiian Electric Company. She's a design systems engineer. And she's this year's cherry blossom queen. So <laughs> such a well-rounded individual. Yeah, I think so. Got got it all. How about you? Next year, you have to do that, Adrian. Never mind. 
<laughs> in our keynote this year, we always want to try and focus on uh, local born and bred um, STEM professionals. So Dr. Heather Kaluna, who was born and raised in Pahoa, got her bachelor's degree at the University of Hawaii Hilo, came to UH Manoa, got a PhD in astronomy, and now is an assistant professor at the University of Hawaii in astronomy. So just those three, uh, Adria can explain the other women that we are featuring this year. Yeah, yeah Adria, we, please do. Yeah, we have a couple of um, so-called ads or commercials by a lot of young women professionals who are currently in STEM fields. And so, uh, for example, we have Amber Imai Hong. Um, she's one of the ones that Art had introduced before. She uh, was from YK High School, um, got her degree in electrical engineering at UH Manoa, and is currently a satellite engineer uh, across from me at the Hawaii Space Flight Lab. Um, she, and this year she led a GEAR state grant um, and she was able to get um, middle school and high school um, teachers and students um, cube satellite kits for them to build uh, in, their, in their own classrooms. Um, another ad that we have is uh, from Christina Felicitas. Uh, she was pretty much in, my, in the same year as me back uh, in high school, but she went to Farrington High School. Uh, we, were, we met, um, we were competing on a robotics team together. Uh, she went to UH Manoa, uh, got her electrical engineering degree, uh, and also did her master's um, through WPI, so the same undergrad college as me. And right now she's at Northrop Grumman uh, designing pretty much RF systems and microwave um, design. And so we have a pretty good lineup of women engineers um, and scientists here in our program. How about men? You have men? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any men in the program? Uh, we have um, we have some men um, doing some workshops as well. So we have <laughs> Chaminade University, um, their I am a scientist program. They have a couple of um, professors there, uh, men who are pretty much gonna introduce some really cool um, cooking workshops, demonstrating uh, principles in chemistry. So you'll look forward to seeing you know how to make ice cream or butter um, using chemistry, uh, science, so oh, really cool. Interesting. Yeah. interesting. So you want to show them a little science uh, and you want to show them a little space art. So what's the connection between the, uh, the, space, the space lab and um, the Lacey Beach program on uh, October 30th? Make that. Well, I, always, you know, I always tell uh, people when I do uh, family science nights or community events that uh, you cannot major in astronaut in college. You know, if you want to be an astronaut, you have to major in some solid STEM pathway. So it could be in science, could be in engineering, you could be a doctor. And today, because of the people they fly, at first it was all test pilots, but today they fly a diverse group of individuals. And as we saw just recently, uh, four ordinary citizens got to fly in space in orbit around the Earth through that uh, commercial SpaceX ap application, Inspiration4. Mm -hmm. So the possibility of going into space for young people is much more real today than it was back then. Um, so this day is meant to hopefully catalyze a student's interests and make them dream perhaps. And you never know how it could touch a young person um, in, in just listening to other people talk about their adventures. Now let me drill down a little bit on, on that. You know, up till now, uh, from what, 1968 or 69 on the moon, uh, till now it's all been government and NASA doing it, you know, Florida government money and all that, and hiring all the scientists and the researchers, what have you, engineers. But now it's different. Now, now you have private companies, individuals, what have you, um, doing exploration into space. And that means offering jobs and research and engineers and the like um, to build those rockets. They don't get built by themselves. So are you saying now that looking forward that the people who come to the Lacey Beach Discovery Day have a real prospect of working for private industry? Is that what it looks like? If, if I'm one of them uh, and I decide I wanna do that, can I actually get a job? I think that's, that's true. I think years ago when we first started this program, we could only talk about a career pathway with NASA. 
But today, with all the private companies involved in space exploration, there is a much more real possibility of being involved in the space program. And also, we should not forget the military that's expanding their presence in space with Space Force and so forth. So there will be jobs there as well. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. So th there's, a, there's a conflation, isn't there, Adra, about space and, and robotics? I mean, if you're in space, you really want robotics. And if you're building robotics, you want to you wanna know the lessons that we have learned in, in space. So as a, a robotics engineer, you have an interest in any event within your discipline of, uh, you know, of, of connecting it with space, don't you? Oh, for sure. I mean, we saw you know, a lot of rovers already that went to Mars. Um, you can think of a cube satellite as a little miniature robot that's out there collecting data. And so, like I said, there's so many applications with robotics. We don't necessarily always have to send astronauts up. We can send robots, instruments up to collect the data for us, um, or we can deploy robots, you know, out to different planets in order to collect that, that data. So definitely robotics has a lot of applications with space exploration. You know, <clears throat> um, it, it must be very exciting to be in robotics. And I'm just wondering what kind of projects you contemplate when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning uh, thinking creatively about what robotics can do for us. Um, do, you, do you ever wake up at three o'clock? I do. Uh, think, thinking about things that robotics can do for us, projects that nobody ever imagined before, uh, labor-saving devices, uh, devices that can save the world, really, uh, to make it easier for everyone. And, you know, and, and of course, uh, science in general seeks to do that, but robotics is, is the translation of science into something physical right now, right here, as close to you as, as your neighbor. Um, so my question is, what do you think about at three in the morning? What are your creative and aspirational ideas? Well, I mean, back then when I was a teacher at St. Louis at 3 a.m., I was pretty much sleeping <laughs> from exhaustion of teaching all day, but I kind of let the, my students pretty much think about that. Um, for me, as an educator, I try to think about how to better teach robotics to the students, how to better give them the engineering tools so that, you know, it's, they're the ones that um, are going out to look for those problems in order to solve them. And so, like you said, like, for example, um, our robotics team before was supposed to go to Japan for a World Robot Summit. And so part of that competition, they had to develop a robotic technology in order to help with something in their own home. And so my team at the time actually developed um, a clothes folding robot. And so they actually built a prototype and all. They, we got baby clothes and they pretty much were able to, to build something that could fold clothes easily. So anything is possible. <laughs> In my library, I have a book of short stories, plays as it were, and that I read when I was in junior high school. You can imagine how, how long ago that was. And one of them is called um, Rodman's Universal Robots, uh, R-U-R. And it was written by a, an author, interestingly enough, from the, somewhere in Eastern Europe. And it was a story of robots and it was written in like 1922, not kidding. Um, and some people think that this, this play, uh, R-U-R, um, was actually the, the, the the creation of the term robots, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so, you know, Art, right, where, does, where does robotics fit in the larger picture of uh, HIGP? Uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about the conflation of uh, ro robotics and space, but where does it fit in, in all the science that you guys do over there? It's, it's one of many things, but somehow it is special, right? Well, many of our scientists are involved in uh, like lunar exploration or Mars exploration, Earth observations, and all of these involve satellites or rovers uh, collecting data. We've had some scientists in our building that actually are part of the Mars uh, rover missions that they determine where the, the targets will be for the rover to go to. I think one advantage uh, maybe unique opportunity Adrian and I have had is we were able to attend and see the World Robot Summit and also the International Robotics Exposition in Japan. Uh, can you imagine two football fields of 
hundreds of robots applied to every aspect of our civilization, whether it's home care, hospitalization, agriculture, industry. And so we see the possibilities of what our students can aspire to become in innovation. I want it. I would think about COVID, for example, you know, you don't want the medical professionals to get too close to this, spend too much time with them. And COVID won't be the end of pandemics either. It'll happen again, it'll all be respiratory. So um, if I give you a robot that can handle at least some of the tasks that are required to, to treat patients in ICUs, I'm really doing everyone a favor and I'm keeping people safe. Uh, and by the way, they don't have to look like people. Uh, they can look like mm, who knows what. <laughs> they can look like anything as long as they do the job. And what you, what you study in uh, robotics in school at HIGP, um, the, those things could be very useful in, in developing this kind of thing. You think about that at three in the morning. Yes, I, I think in children's minds, they, they have the opportunity to innovate that maybe we as adults are kind of unable to do. So we want to unleash that possibility for them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so what, you know, uh, uh, Adria, are you going to speak with all these other speakers and tell them your life story and what turns you on about robotics and, and HIGP and physics and what have you? Well, uh, not during the Lacey Beach Day event. That, that'll be saved for, for another time. Okay. We just want right. to, we really want to highlight all of the STEM professionals that, that are there. Um, I, get, I, I really want to know how you are doing your outreach on this. Uh, who are you intending to bring in on it? And how are you reaching them in order to um, get them to view it, get them to sign up for it? What, what we found last year is not as many people watch it live, but then because it's archived on YouTube, we got viewings. We still continue to get viewings on it because... It turns out it's become a rich resource for educators and for parents because there's some really cool workshops that are included in this. Because one of our rules is the workshops have to include things that you can use in your home. So it's nothing where you'd have to go out and buy a chemistry set or anything like that. So it continues to serve a value uh, for people. So who are you who are you reaching out to? You you want uh, grade school kids, you want high school kids, you want um, people who have already finished and are out of the workforce and want to have a better career, uh, who are you addressing your, your VEACH program to? Primarily to students in probably the target range would be grades four to eight. However, we have had younger kids and older students. An example is last year, uh, we reached out to a super science high school in Ihime, Japan. They gathered 90 students. 90s children on a weekend, on a Sunday for them at 7 a.m. their time, and they watched the Lacey Beach Day. So and that was an example, one viewing, but there were multiple people there. Um, they received pretty large recognition in their, their community. And then all the way to Florida. Of course, the, last year was the first time Lacey's family actually got to be part of a Lacey Beach Day. Oh, that's great. Because they have not been able to attend before. Well, if you do, if you do it by virtual, you know, you can do it that way. And my question to you guys uh, is, a, now that you've, you know, you've, uh, you've done it virtual last year and you're about to do it virtual this year on October 30, um, you, you, you might want to continue to do it virtual on into the future or a hybrid of, you know, some virtual and some live, uh, whatever, you know, the mix and match media kind of thing. What are your thoughts about that, Art? Do you think you will continue to do it virtual even after the pandemic? I, I think I would, I would like to see it go back live. But as you mentioned, there should be a portion of it that will go out on uh, some kind of virtual network. Uh, because I, I don't think there's anything better than for someone to shake hands with an astronaut that we bring in as a keynote or to, to meet Nainoa Thompson or to hear his words directly. I, I think it's... It's very meaningful. And obviously the hands-on workshops are really the key to maybe getting students to be inspired in STEM. So I, I think that's really important. You know, Adria, uh, my three in the morning experience includes things like designing a robotic camera, a really good USB camera 
uh, that can be controlled by the guy at the other end. And I put this in a little cardboard box and I send it, for example, from you to Art. Art opens the box, he connects the camera to his computer. All he's got to do is plug it in. And now you at the home base, you can control how the camera is functioning. You can control the light, control the focus, you can control all these things remotely on your computer. And he has the benefit of it and he looks better. You can even change his sound. <laughs> what about that? <clears throat> Why don't you guys, you know, think up a, and have a big logo on an HIGP, right? <laughs> and you can send it away to Florida, whatever, and have the people in Florida use it. And then when they're done, they'll put it back in the box and send it to you, postage prepaid. Wouldn't that be a great product? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the okay. features we had, one of the features we had last year in the Lacey Beach Day, following the Lacey Beach Day, we hosted five live field trips uh, for for students who had logged on to our our questionnaire, and so we invited them to places like the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab live. So it's really opened up the opportunities. I think, as you pointed out, uh, way bigger than what we did locally. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens, and we will see what happens on October thirty. And how can people sign up for the October 30 program? Adria, are you the one who wrote the website? Well, all of the information is on our website. So it's at spacegrant.hawaii.edu. There's no registration needed um, like in past year. So anyone can just log in. It's gonna be um, streamed on YouTube on that day. So um, teachers, students, parents, families can pretty much just log on to YouTube that day and watch our program. And then also, we're gonna also host a live uh, remote tournament um, as well. So it's a robotics tournament. We have 16 teams uh, from international Canada and also in California competing virtually as well. So even our robotics tournaments have gone virtual this oh, year. That's great. How long is it gonna last? Well, the Lacey Beach Day uh, pr uh, program will last about an hour and a half. And then our robotics tournament will pretty much be streamed um, all day. Oh, good. All right. That's a great way to do it. So, Art, we're going to watch a little film now that you guys gave us. Can you introduce the film? What is this about? And, um, you know, what does it show? And um, why did you make it? Well, AJ put this together. Uh, she did it last year, and it was a way to promote the upcoming event. So she took snippets from our various uh, videos that we got, and this is the outcome, and this is this year's version of it. So if you can show it now, that will be great. Okay, we're going to show it right now. If you, you can talk about it afterward. <laughs> That was really good, you know, and I'm speaking, I'm speaking about it as somebody who makes movies all the time, Adrian. That was good. Oh, so um, what, what would you add to that film? What, what should we take away from it? Well, as you saw, we, there are a lot of snippets as to what is upcoming in that Lacey Beach Day promo. We have our guest speakers, um, like astronaut 
uh, MacArthur, and also we have our commercials and ads from our women STEM professionals. And like you saw, there are a lot of cool workshops that are uh, coming up, like Squishy Circuits uh, by Hawaiian Electric. There's Microgravity by the Hawaii Space Flight Lab. And so um, families and students can pretty much partake in these types of workshops in their own home using their own uh, materials that they can find. So well, Art, are, are you going to open the uh, the program on uh, October 30th? It will not be on the video, not at all. <laughs> You're so shy. Art is yes. shy, Adria. Me either. I, I, I'm not on it either. <laughs> so that's why it's such a treat to talk to you guys. The guys behind the scenes putting this together. That's great. Art, can you give us a, a sort of a closing message on what you would want people to, to, uh, to, to do and think about, uh, not only in terms of the Lacey Veach program, but in, in terms of appreciating science at UH, uh, at SOWEST, at HIGP, um, and in, in Hawaii as a, as a new and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, nourishing sector of the economy? I think um, what we found over the years is we have such a rich resource of community uh, professionals and organizations that are willing to contribute and eager to contribute to help the next generation get inspired in, in their career path, whatever it may be. And so we're very grateful to all of these uh, organizations, individuals who come together to bring these kinds of programs together. It's not just the Lacey Beach Day. We have hundreds of volunteers who come to our robotics events to act as judges or referees. And so we need to honor these individuals. Their commitment to the next generation is really high. And we, we're very encouraged by that. And we, we're encouraged by the young people who have that aspiration to go into these really high-end careers. Yeah, and Adria, you know, <clears throat> not everybody who's not everybody who's interested in science is young. There are people out there who are interested in science and not so young. Is there an age limit on this program? Definitely not. <laughs> it's just whoever is curious about science or technology or just, you know, taking something from their own home and just putting it together and trying things out. That's kind of what the message that we want to send in our Lacey Beach Day program. So what is your message to the young people who might see this video, who might sign up uh, and attend the program virtually and in years to come, maybe, maybe uh, you know, in person? Um, what, what is your message? As uh, I'm making a guess here, as a relatively young person, what is your <laughs> message to them? <laughs> Well, kind of like what I tell my former students is pretty much you never know unless you try, right? Even if you don't know if you're going to like robotics or science or engineering, it, I mean, it won't hurt to just try it out. Even if you have the best design for a robot, you don't know unless you try it out, prototype it, build it. If it doesn't work, then like it doesn't work then scrap the idea and move on to the next one. So. Yeah, yeah that, that applies to life in general too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adria. Thank you, Art, for setting this up. Really appreciate it. Every year it sort of demarks our, our September calendar that you come around, and we really appreciate your participating in our shows. Thank Aloha. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Art, Adria. Aloha. Aloha.